My name is Richard Black. Welcome to the LaRouche Organization Morning Briefing. Uh, this is for Wednesday, August 9th. Uh, I am pre-recording late the night before on uh, uh, Tuesday night, uh, August 8th, and I'm sitting in today for Holly Schlanger. I have for you today a report of quite amazing developments towards the formation of a new international monetary and trade system in tandem with an emerging coordinated worldwide peace movement to end the conflict in Ukraine and get on with the business of economic development. I'll give you a bit of background on why the BRICS, this Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa grouping, uh, has become so attractive for the vast majority of the 190 nations across the globe, and a bit of a war report as well as to global, global NATO's uh, continued threats of pursuing World War III with Russia and China. Just this past weekend, as I, Jason Ross reported to you yesterday, there was an extraordinary development in that there were peace rallies coordinated with a single message in dozens of nations across the country, in Mexico, in Africa, throughout Europe, uh, in Asia, and throughout the United States. I was at the rally uh, at the UN in New York City, which had an extraordinary nature uh, by itself. There were spokesmen uh, from uh, every corner of the globe and from every part of the political spectrum in the United States. Speakers such as uh, Scott Ritter, uh, Garland Nixon in the United States, Diane Sayre, candidate for U.S. Senate in New York, Helga Zeppler-Rusch uh, sent an extended message for the Schiller Institute. We received a, a, a message from the former president of Guyana, Donald Ramatar, uh, and other major speeches. Uh, the message was that global NATO's plan for world war will be stopped by a new growing chorus across the globe, uh, which says uh, governments that refuse to stop the war, those governments themselves will be stopped. And in its place will be a policy of one humanity towards global economic development. Uh, quite extraordinary. Uh, and and uh, there represented was both uh, the voice for peace in the United States and many voices from peace movements, development movements from throughout the globe, throughout the global south. Now, in the next 13 days, there will be an inflection point of a heads of state meeting in South Africa, in Johannesburg, of the BRICS heads of state. Uh, what will occur is that on August 22nd, as the leaders of these nations gather in South Africa, President Xi Jinping of China will also, on the same day, August 22nd, arrive in uh, South Africa to meet with the president of South Africa, Ramaphosa, and discuss large-scale industrialization and development deals focused on energy uh, and uh, other major projects. Uh, arriving will be 23 other nations who are candidates, self declared candidates to join the BRICS and several dozen other nations attending from Africa. And the theme of this year's uh, summit of BRICS is global multilateral development, especially of the nations of South Africa. Uh, there, was, uh, there are certain comical elements to this in that the arch imperialist uh, clown uh, Macron, the president of France, demanded to be given an invitation uh, to the party, to the conference of the BRICS in Johannesburg. And of course, uh, the uh, external affairs minister of South Africa, the very distinguished intellect, Dr. Pandora, when asked by Agence France Presse what, uh, why Macron uh, was refused an invitation, uh, she laughed and she said, well, uh, you know, what can I say? This is quite amusing. No, no, we did not extend that invitation. Well, that comment, well, this is quite amusing, 
this is really worth about a trillion bucks. And it, it encapsulates the orientation towards a new paradigm, the kind of new paradigm that Helga zepp has been outlining for many, many years now, uh, including with the legacy of her husband, Lyndon LaRouche. Now, I should mention, at the same time, uh, a major article from uh, the LaRouche forces called LaRouche Essentials for the Formation and Transformation to a New International Monetary System. This is now being circulated throughout the BRICS on their major website by the Research Committee of the BRICS in Russia uh, uh, and elsewhere. Uh, widespread circulation of the uh, uh, discoveries in economics, in physical economy, in economic development uh, that were the, the uh, that had their origins with Lynn LaRouche. So, in addition to the uh, motion, the action for development, there is a intellectual underpinning uh, which is circulating widely uh, throughout the BRICS nations. Uh, Sergey Glaziev, the acad academician from Russia eminent economist, uh, recently circulated it in Russian on his Telegram channel. So there's wide circulation that there's a way to think where, which allows development to take place and to break the back of the several hundred year old colonial system. Now, I mean, there are many, many other developments. Uh, for instance, uh, in the last days, Qatar and Russia are in heavy negotiations to switch their trade, uh, which is worth about $2 billion a year, uh, out of the dollar and into uh, ruble and the real of Qatar. Uh, there are reports like this occurring almost every, uh, almost every day now. So <clears throat> you might say, well, why is this, uh, this outline of a new monetary system so prominent in Russia, so prominent in China, Two giant nations, uh, Russia, a 1,000-year-old civilization, China, 5,000 years old, uh, an astounding meteoric rise out of poverty over the last 40 years to uh, advanced science and economy. What's the secret? Well, a bit of an indicator was indicated, was, was given uh, over the last week by a preview of an article being published today August 9th, in the uh, uh, Chinese theoretical journal, Chiu Shi, um, which essentially means searching for truth. And it's a major article by Xi Jinping. And what he says is, given the trade war against China, the sanctions, the, uh, the, uh, the banning of the sale of uh, technological goods to China, China is embarking on a total focus not on technology, but on fundamental scientific breakthroughs in all areas of physics, mathematics, etc. And she outlines in this article uh, a, a, an economic policy which would be reminiscent to any student of American history of the science-oriented policy of JFK, in launching the, the uh, moonshot in the early 90s, or Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, in the 30s and 40s, building massive infrastructure, mobilizing the entire nation in every corner of the United States uh, to build energy uh, and, and other key projects. Uh, this is the kind of thinking that's coming out of China today. And I, I, I want you to, to hear the words uh, this week of President Xi Jinping, and think about this coming from a national leader, and think about whether you might expect such a speech from uh, Joe Biden, or the President of France, or the, or, or the Prime Minister of Great Britain. Here's what she said, published today uh, in China. Strengthening basic research is an urgent requirement for achieving high-level scientific and technological self-reliance and self-improvement, and is the only way to build a world science and technology power. At present, a new round of scientific and technological revolution 
and industrial transformation is developing in depth. Interdisciplinary integration is constantly advancing. The paradigm of scientific research has undergone profound changes. Science and technology and economic and social development have accelerated penetration and integration. The transformation cycle of basic research has been significantly shortened. And international scientific and technological competition has moved forward to the basic frontier. To cope with international scientific and technological competition, to achieve high-level scientific and technological self-reliance, promote the construction of a new development pattern, and achieve high-quality development. To, to do that, it is urgent for us to strengthen basic research and to solve key technological problems from the source and from the bottom. Unquote. This is part of a quite long article on economics, or what uh, Ms. LaRouche would call physical economy. So this orientation towards the mind of man transforming nature to the betterment and uplifting of society, transforming illiterate and undereducated populations into skilled workers and engineers, that's what Africa finds so attractive in the outlook today typified by China and Russia. And if you want to know what it is that binds the two nations today uh, in a way which they state is unprecedented in history, it's this orientation around scientific and economic development. To, to my mind, it's reminiscent of uh, an address once given by Lyndon LaRouche in which he said the key was to physical economy, to national economy, was discover, discover, discover. And that's what's afoot in the BRICS and in the world today among, among the global South. Now, <clears throat> in terms of the chaos factor that global NATO is uh, dispensing in order to prevent the fruition of these plans afoot already in motion in an advanced degree, you look at the situation in Africa, there have been several uh, coups in the last period, most recently, recently in Niger, where the military overthrew the elected president, Bazoum. The new leader, General uh, Chiani, has said that, no, we're not going to be given, be, be given, be, be given pennies anymore from France for our raw materials, including uranium. In fact, we are cutting off sales of uranium to France. Now, this, of course, is causing panic in Europe and in France because 70% of France's electricity is dependent on uranium from Niger. So, of course, who arrives in Niger this week but the cookie monster, uh, arch neocon, uh, 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 Newland, uh, mucking around, threatening to... Uh, bring in NATO, uh, create a huge conflagration in Africa. It's a dangerous situation. But the, the theme <clears throat> is, is constant, that the colonial period is over. One way or the other, the countries of Central America, South America, are not going to bow down. Uh, <clears throat> in order to uh, uh, carry out this domination, beyond uh, uh, New England showing up in Niger, there are, have been a series in the last hours of U.S. and NATO military deployments across the globe in order to threaten the nations of the global south. Uh, a former uh, prime minister of Japan, uh, Aso, just arrived in Taiwan, and he is pushing global NATO, that is a U.S., NATO, Japan, Taiwan alliance against China, preparing for war with China. Among other things that he said in the last hours while in Japan, I give you a quote. He said, this is uh, former Prime Minister Aso of Japan speaking in Taiwan. 
I believe that now is the time for Japan, Taiwan, and the United States, and other like-minded nations, to be prepared to put into action a strong deterrent. That's, that's the determination to fight. This is Japan, of uh, uh, clearly unrepentant from their fascist monstrosity uh, that they exhibited uh, in, in the last world war. In the Persian Gulf, the U.S. is sending the U.S. Fifth Fleet uh, into the Red Sea, uh, including two ships with 2,000 Marines equipped with Osprey tilt rotor aircraft and Harrier jump jets and helicopters in order to confront Iran. And off the coast of Australia, uh, India has launched something called the Malbar Exercises involving the military of, the navies of Japan, the U.S. and Australia in an encirclement and warning and preparation for war with China. This is just in the last, <clears throat> in the last day. So what we see is a, a very sharp distinction between a growing intelligentsia represented by the BRICS nations, a re-emergence uh, uh, of the historic non-aligned movement, the spirit of Bandung from the uh, Africa-Asia Conference of 1955. This is a, a determination, a concept, a plan, a paradigm, uh, a, a battle plan for peace, which the majority of the nations are moving forward. Our task is to get the West, the United States, Europe, to give up on this uh, mass killing field it has created in Ukraine and join the efforts to create a new system based upon not just the development of the, co the golden billion, the one billion in the North, but the nation as a whole. And as you can see from the posters behind me, uh, these were, uh, these were the mottos. These were the themes struck uh, outside the United Nations this past uh, week uh, and is the growing theme uh, that is the trend of the solutions for mankind today. So that's our report for Wednesday, uh, August 9th. Uh, please uh, uh, tune in tomorrow uh, and we'll give you a further update. Thanks for listening.